we have been joined uh, by Johnny Bairstow. How are you, Johnny? Good, thanks, Keezy. How is everyone? All right. Hello, Johnny. Yeah, well, Morning, Johnny. Nice. Uh, what, what have you been up? Now, I've seen you yesterday. You were part of these sort of social media pass them on challenges, which are at times irritating, at times brilliant. You were what? You were doing your... Um, you're doing the lawn in your full England kit. Now, I wasn't sure, I've seen you out and about in your full England kit in nightclubs, so I wasn't sure you're doing anything different. <laughs> uh, thanks, thanks a lot, Keezy. I'd have needed my ID if you were out with me. <laughs> so, what have you been up to, Johnny? Uh, to be honest with you, obviously, it's been the first week, so just kind of getting used to like, being indoors, to be honest, other than being out in the garden and trying to do all of that stuff. Uh, going for your, your run a day if you wish it's just kind of getting used to the fact that w this is what we're going to be doing and there's not going to be really any any cricket for the foreseeable uh, You What about IPL news? I mean you had a brilliant year in that last year your first year for Sunrisers Hyderabad uh, you and David Warner at the top of the innings have you heard, got any news for us on the IPL? Absolutely not um, as we've all seen in the news they've completely gone into lockdown as well I think until uh, mid-April so I can't really see there being too much of an update until they stabilise their situation over there until uh, borders are, are back open um, and then I guess it's a case of the organisers getting down to whether or not we're, uh, there is a chance of fitting it in but naturally ha having been there last year and seeing how uh, amazing the, the competition is uh, really really eager to try and get back over. Just tell us about that experience last year, Johnny. I mean, it, it, from a distance, it looked fantastic. Bromance with David Warner at the top of the order. <laughs> Tell us all about it. It was an amazing, amazing um, experience, to be really honest with you. Um, obviously, with Dave, when you're playing against someone um, and then when you come to play with someone, I think it was, it was fascinating to try and get an insight into his um, way of going about uh, T20 cricket in general. Um, the way in which he thought about it was uh, fascinating, to be honest with you, and that's why he's been so successful for so long um, in the IPL, but also at the highest level uh, in Test cricket and international cricket. What's he like as a bloke, Johnny David Warner? Don't worry, there's only about three people who listen to this <laughs> podcast, so it won't go any further. What's he like? He's like the pantomime villain when he was over here in the summer. Um, what's he like as a person, David Warner? Look, I think that over a long period of time, that's been the uh, perception of, of him. Um, I think that uh, that's the role in which he's played in international cricket for a long time, trying to get under the, the noses of opposition's skin. And that's why, uh, that, that's why that, that has come about it. But um, to go into an environment that I'd never been into before um, in the IPL last year, um, I couldn't have really asked for, for too much more. He was very welcoming and uh, very helpful with um, whether it was the opposition that we were playing against um, or whether it was out in the middle, the, the, the pitches we were playing on, the stadiums that we were playing at, whether one was going to, to, uh, to potentially turn a bit more or be a bit slower and, and those kind of uh, insights into uh, what it's like playing the IPL, IPL against those bowlers. What about actually when you played, you, you're going over there as an overseas player, you had a great pedigree in international cricket and this is very good domestic cricket. Do you feel under, was there extra pressure you felt going out there? Well, to be really honest with you, I wasn't too sure whether or not I was going to play. I think I only started the tournament because Kane Williamson was injured um, at the start of the comp. So I was just going over there to uh, hopefully get some sort of opportunity. I mean, if you look at the other overseas that we've got within our side, you've obviously got David Warner, like you mentioned, Kane Williamson, you've got uh, um, Nate Rashid Khan, uh, Billy Stanlake. Um, you've literally got a, a plethora of overseas um, that Martin Guptill, uh, that, that you're thinking, right, am I actually going to get a go here? Because depending on the balance of the side, uh, we had Sahar as the other keeper as well. Um, and you weren't really sure whether or not I was going to get a, a kind of go within the, within the side, first of all. And Tom Moody, when I spoke to him, was very honest about that. What about Rashid Khan? You would have kept to him. How, what was that? I mean, he seems to bowl so quick as much as anything. Yeah, exactly that. And spending a bit of time in the middle with him, just trying to 
uh, to pick up any cues, keeping wicket to him. You hit the nail on the head. Everyone has spoken in the summer about the pace in which he bowls over a period of time, whether that be in the Big Bash or whether that be uh, playing for Afghanistan. It is exactly that. And trying to pick up the cues of his googly, his uh, leg spinner was, was an important part of um, standing up to him because when it is coming down at 58, 60 miles an hour and it, and it is turning, it's not necessarily the easiest job. What about on the pitches as well? Because when he played in England, it just seemed to skid on. But out there, especially in the subcontinent, and actually in T20 in general, he's had so much success. Does it just almost stop in the surface rather than just skip on? How does it come out of the pitch? Look, I think that as a whole, he's not a massive, massive turner of his leg spinner. I think that his googly and his one that goes straight on is, is really, really effective balls when people start trying to sweep him uh, and go across the line and trying to cut him that's when people start getting into a bit of strife with him um, in the summer over here nat naturally in England it doesn't potentially turn as much um, so that's one of the things that maybe didn't necessarily help him as much but at the same time people have now faced him uh, around the world a little bit more so the cues that people are getting and the experience that they're having facing uh, him from being in these franchise competitions around the world will be helping. Johnny, just away from the IPL, I think Keezy's trying to get himself an IPL gig, to be honest. Um, <laughs> some, some good news in the last couple of weeks. Your mum, was it vice president of Yorkshire? She must have been first female to get that role. You must have been absolutely thrilled for her. Yeah, absolutely delighted, um, Nass. It was um, a very proud moment. Uh, for my mum, for our family, uh, uh, she's obviously done a lot of lot of work at Yorkshire over about 13 years, and then obviously uh, being with dad uh, throughout um, when he was at Yorkshire, and then the amount of hours that she's had taking me to the club for winter <laughs> nets, or uh, taking me to the outgrounds growing up, and what have you. Um, no, it's it's really well deserved, and. Uh, just the the amount of work that she put in look, trying to look after all the boys, to be honest with you, like making sure the kits are right, the overseas visas, the houses, everything that, uh, the unseen work underneath. Uh, she was the first person that people saw when you walked into the ground on a game day or whatever it was. So but I'm, I'm absolutely delighted for, for her. Uh, it means that she's able to uh, keep coming to uh, Yorkshire and uh, keep watching the cricket because obviously now she's retired from the club. Um, and no, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's really, really um, nice that the club's been able to do that. For Going back to self-isolation, you must be an absolute nightmare because when we, <laughs> when we see you around the cricket ground, I think Keezy described you as an irritant, to be honest, but... No, no I, I don't... You, I, <laughs> right, you can't just tell say you that. that. You are like a Duracell battery, mate, aren't you? You come and press the sky cart. You are buzzing around 24-7. How are you coping? We're just doing nothing. Duracell bunny. It's actually been really nice to spend a bit of time at home, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, as, you. As you guys know, the amount of time that you spend touring, I think we'd had six nights at home or something like that since October. Uh, I'd had. So actually being able to spend a bit of time at home has been really, really nice. I've got all the lovely chores to be doing and <laughs> wood to be chopping that, that needs sorting out and, and... Would to be chopped? Would you live in a forest? <laughs> well, I've just renovated the house, Keezy, so... I've got, you know, I've got central heating or something. I mean, what do you have to yeah. chop wood for? I'm walking to the well to get some water. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've got all of that stuff to do and... Um, yeah, it's not necessarily been easy, but around where I am, there's some decent runs and, and stuff like that, so I'm able to get out and, and go for my... Have you got any Jim tips for people? Sorry, everybody Johnny. Yesterday, Johnny um, and was talking about the kind of renewed appreciation that he'll have when he gets the chance to play again. Do you think that that's going to be a widespread feeling that, that people, you know, will, will have a, almost a, a different relationship with the game when they get to start to play again? Yeah, I think so. I think that um, with the scheduling as it has been, uh, it's relentless. So you're literally just going from game to game to game to game. And I think you hit the nail on the head, the appreciation that people are going to have and the excitement people 
people are going to have actually going and picking a, a bat up again, I think it's going to be huge. Um, the appreciation for being out uh, on a field with your mates again, to be running around laughing, smiling, joking uh, with your pals um, is, is going to definitely, definitely change the way in which people view it. Um, and I think that when people get back at it, I think the intensity in which the, the cricket is going to be played is going to be um, a notch up again. As you as you sort of sit here now, I suppose it's a time to reflect. And what are you looking at? Let's obviously hope that Test cricket, One Day cricket, international cricket comes back. What's your plan? What are you focusing on when you come back? Not just one format, but what what are you sitting there thinking? This is what I'm going to do next time I get the chance. Um, first of all, is is seeing which formats we're going to be playing. I think first and foremost, uh, once that once that comes out, you, you're going to have different. Um, game plans and what have you in going about the uh, ways in which you want to play your county cricket to your test cricket to uh, one day cricket to T20 cricket like we all know so it's good to be able to have a bit of a, a sit down and, and a reflection period um, of right this is where I'm at this is what I want to do um, this is how I want to go about it next time round um, and I also think that it'll give people an opportunity not to look too far ahead because we've seen that within the space of three weeks, the whole country's gone from being fairly normal, events going on as normal, football games going on, rugby games going on, to literally everyone being confined to within their own houses and allowed out for a walk a day. So I think that it'll uh, give people an actual perspective on not just cricket, not just sport, but life in general, I think. What about you sitting at home as well? For kids out there, anyone like that, what would you be doing? How When you were playing in the back garden, what were you doing playing cricket? I mean, you played a lot of sports, I assume. What would you suggest for kids who want to get going playing cricket somehow? I don't know whether you've seen that video that's going around, but don't get your, don't get your yeah. mum to feed. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. I send that to my mum. <laughs> oh. It's do not get your mum to feed and do not whack it back at her. <laughs> you will be doing all the chores for the next four weeks. <laughs> what about you, mum? When, when you, when, she's obviously watched you, as you said, and been there all the time. If you got out, is she a parent that would have a go at you? Why'd you get done with that one, Johnny? Get forward, do all that, or do you just support all the way? Nah, she she wasn't, to be honest with you. There were a lot of parents that were like that. I think that uh, more so when I was growing up, um, there were potentially dads, to be really honest with you. It was more uh, dads that were a bit more uh, pushy and vocal and this, that and the other, saying, come on, do this, do that to, to their kids. And mum... Um, Mum wasn't really like that. It was a case of um, she used to be very lucky enough to uh, take me to the different sports and what have you. But if, if it was a case of well, I didn't necessarily play well, she knew that I was. She knew that I hadn't played well, and I knew that I hadn't played well. So there wasn't really a um, a case of ram it down your throat and you should be doing this, you should be doing that. I knew that I hadn't played well, and I thought about how I wanted to try and get better.